In this video, you're gonna learn all about Yarn. It's a package manager released by Facebook and it was designed to solve their scaling issues. Yarn was built around four core principles, reliability, security, speed, and finally usability. And it really does hit on all four of those. Now, if you've taken any of my courses before, you've used NPM. We know there's two sides to NPM. There's npmjs.org. This is the repository where we can find the libraries that might solve our problems. And there's the command line tools. What we're gonna be exploring is an alternative to these command line tools. The Yarn command line tools are 100% compatible with all of the modules you're already using from NPM, which means you don't need to change a single line of application code. You can get all of the benefits and change almost nothing. It takes about 20 seconds to make the switch. In the end of the day, we're still using a package.json file and we're still outputting code to a node modules folder. It's just heavily optimized behind the scenes. In this video, you're going to learn all about Yarn and the commands it provides. And you'll also get some real world experience switching a project from using the NPM command line tools to the Yarn command line tools. There's a table of contents in the player below. So feel free to skip around. If you need to remember how to do something, you can jump through the video at your own pace. Otherwise, we're going to dive right in installing Yarn on your machine. Before we install the Yarn command line tools together, let's head over to Yarn pkg.com. This is the official website. It's got some awesome docs, some great guides and blog posts. I'd highly recommend taking a little time to explore it once you go over the basics in this video. There's a lot of great resources here. Now we're going to be installing Yarn using NPM. We're going to install it as a global module. If you are using a package manager like Brew on OS X or apt-get on Linux, there are instructions for that here, but we're going to ignore that for the moment and we're going to install it via the terminal. Right here, we're going to use npm install. We're going to install this as a global module. We want to be able to access it from the terminal and the module name itself is called yarn. We can leave off any sort of version tag. We don't need that for our example. We're going to grab the most recent version, which in this case right now is 0.19.1. Now, once this is installed, we're going to be able to use yarn commands to create our project and to add, remove and update dependencies. And you're going to see that there are a lot of similar commands in yarn that NPM has things like init, things like adding and removing modules. They all exist in yarn. The commands are just a little different. And quite frankly, they usually have better defaults. They're a lot harder to mess up. Now we do have yarn installed. So what I want to do is go ahead and create a new folder. And in this folder, we're going to play around with creating a yarn project from scratch on the desktop. I'll use MKDIR to make a new folder. I'll call this one yarn hyphen example. Then we can CD into yarn example. And I'm going to open this up in my editor of choice. I'll be using Adam for this video, but you can use any text editor you like. We're going to be keeping things pretty simple in terms of our editors. On the desktop, I'm going to open up that yarn example folder. And by default, we have nothing inside of it, which is perfectly fine. Now, if we were using NPM, we would run NPM in it to generate our package.json file. In the case of yarn, we actually use yarn in it. Yarn in it is going to look super similar to NPM in it. It's going to ask you a series of questions. And these questions are going to be used to populate values in package.json. Now I'm going to use enter to use the default value shown in parentheses for everything, but you can always customize these to fit your needs. In the end of the day, the only thing this command does is it generates a package.json file. You could have generated this file yourself, but yarn in it makes that process much simpler. The actual project we're going to create in this section is just going to be an express server. It's going to be a really, really simple one with one get route. We're not going to add anything complex to that application. This is going to live over in a new file. We can call this file server.js and it should live in the root of our application. And we're going to go through the process of hammering this out real quick. It's just going to be about 15 lines of code and it's all code you should have seen before in the courses. First up, we're going to use a const called express to require express. Notice that this is identical to the require statement you would use if you're using NPM. You do not change how you load in modules, regardless of whether or not you're using the yarn command line tools or the NPM command line tools, making the switching cost almost non-existent. Next up, we can set up a port variable. This will also be a const. We'll check if there is an environment variable process.env 
dot port. If there is, we'll use it. If there's not, we'll default to 3000. Next up, let's go ahead and make an instance of Express, creating a new Express application. Let app equal, and we'll call Express with no arguments. And now we can move on to defining our routes. As I mentioned, we're gonna have just one simple route. App.get is gonna let us set up a get HTTP handler. The route is gonna be forward slash, that'll be the root of our server, and we will be providing a callback function, a function to fire when someone makes a request for that route. We'll provide our request and response arguments, and we're just gonna use response dot send to send back some text. We're not even gonna send back JSON data. We'll just send back a string. This is my yarn project, perfect. The last thing to do inside of here is to use app.listen. We need to listen on a specific port. We're gonna use the port variable created above and I will provide an arrow function that's gonna fire once the server is up. Inside of our callback function, we'll just use console.log to print a little message. We can use template strings right in here to inject the actual port that was used. Server is up on port. Then we'll inject the port and we'll toss a exclamation mark at the end to get a little bit of energy going. And now we are done. This is all we're ever going to do for server.js. And it would be exactly the same if we were using the NPM command line tools. Now from here, we wanna figure out how to add Express as a dependency to our project. If we were using NPM, we would have used NPM, install Express, and we would have tacked on the save flag to save this as a dependency. For Yarn, all we need to do is run Yarn, add, providing the name Express. Notice there is no save flag, and this is what I was talking about earlier when I said that the yarn commands have a better set of defaults. By default, a dependency you add is going to be tracked in package.json, which makes way more sense than the setup npm has. Now, if I was going to provide a specific version, I would tack that on at 3.0.0, for example, but in our case, we're going to install the most recent version available. Now here, it's going to go through a few steps, but in the end of the day, you're going to get a node modules folder in your project that looks identical to what you would have had if you were using NPM, and it's completely compatible with the require statement you already have in place. You'll also notice that inside of package.json, Express was indeed added under the dependencies section, even though we didn't explicitly say to do that. This is just default behavior, and it really is fantastic. Now there is one big difference so far. You'll notice that inside of the project, we have a brand new file, something we've never seen before, a yarn lock file. Now yarn lock is an auto-generated file. You should not be editing this file directly. It'll get changed over time as you run yarn commands from the command line. Anytime you add, update, or remove a dependency, yarn lock will automatically get updated. You don't change it directly. That's only gonna cause problems. Now, before I talk about exactly the purpose it serves, it should get checked into version control. So if you're using Git, you do not want to add yarn lock to git ignore. You do want to check it in and commit it as it changes. Now, the yarn lock file was designed to make sure that you're always using the exact same version of dependencies across environments, whether it's me and another engineer or whether it's me and my server, for example, a Heroku server or an AWS EC2 instance. Yarn lock, as you can see, looks pretty similar to the contents of node modules. We start off with accepts, we then have array flan, and we move on through a pretty long list. Yarn lock specifies the exact version of a package that was last used, not a version range. So over inside of package.json, for example, we don't have a version, we have a version range. We have a caret before 4.14.0. Now the caret allows the patch, the far right number, or the minor, the middle number, to change. So for example, if version 4.55.6 came out, that would be okay, and it would be installed using this version range. But this can cause major problems. You don't wanna automatically have your versions change because you deploy to Heroku, for example. So imagine I install Express 4.14.0, that's the most recent version, I'm developing with it, and then I go ahead and I deploy to Heroku. 
Well, when I deploy to Heroku, it's going to reinstall my dependencies and 4.14.0 might no longer be the most recent version. Maybe 4.15.0 is out and maybe it's not backwards compatible with 4.14.0. That's going to be a really big problem and it's going to make it really hard to track down issues. I'm using 4.14.0 locally because I installed it yesterday, but when I deploy to Heroku today, it's using a different version. The yarn lock file fights this. It makes Yarn deterministic, meaning it uses the exact same version of modules across all environments. This is what gets used to determine the exact version to use. If you took my React course, then you had firsthand experience with this. Remember when foundation sites updated? They updated the folder that the CSS and JavaScript files were in, but it was a minor change and minor changes under strict Semver guidelines, they should not have backwards incompatible changes. This did, it broke a lot of student projects. That issue would not have occurred if we were all using Yarn. Yarn also lets you specify dev dependencies, dependencies that are only needed in development environments. For example, maybe this is some sort of testing tool like Mocha. You can install a dev dependency using the exact same command, yarn add. We're also going to specify the package we need. Let's just use Mocha, for example. We're not actually going to set up any tests, but this time, instead of running the command like this and adding it as a dependency, we are going to tack on the dev flag to mark it as a dev dependency. In NPM, you would have used save dev here. It automatically gets saved, so we just use dev. When I run this command, it's going to go ahead and actually install Mocha and over inside of our project, we'll now see we have a dev dependencies section showing up. Mocha is installed in node modules and yarn lock has indeed been updated. From here, we can also remove our dependencies. We can go ahead and remove Mocha, for example, using yarn remove. And then we just specify the package we want to remove. If I want to remove Mocha, I run yarn remove Mocha. Once again, this is going to update package.json, getting rid of the dev dependency. It's going to remove it from node modules and yarn lock is also going to get updated. Mocha is going to get removed from there as well. If we're going to talk about adding and removing, we should probably also talk about updating, whether it's updating to the most recent or downgrading to a previous version. Before we do though, I want to set up Git in this project just so we can see how yarn lock changes over time. I'm going to use git init in the terminal. Make sure you do have git installed. You should if you took my React or Node course. Then we're going to add everything into the repository. If I run git status, you can see Node modules is showing up. We want to ignore this. In the project, to keep things simple, we're going to make a git ignore file. And we're just going to specify the node underscore modules directory. Remember, you do want to commit yarn lock. This should not show up inside of gitignore. If I rerun git status, we can see everything looks great. I can use git add to add it all to my staging area and git commit to make my first commit. I'm going to use git commit with the M flag and a good message for this one would be init commit. Perfect. With this in place, we're now going to be able to track changes to yarn lock over time, seeing how it updates as we update our dependencies. Currently, our working branch is clean. Let's go ahead and change Express to a previous version. We're going to downgrade Express to version 3.0.0, and this gets done using yarn upgrade. Now, yarn upgrade can also downgrade. We can use yarn upgrade to upgrade Express. If we were to run the command like this, which we will later, it would upgrade to the most recent version, but we can always specify a version. For example, express at version 3.0.0. If I run this command, it's going to install 3.00 and it's going to update a few files inside of our project. First up, package.json is going to get updated. We're now using 3.0.0 and yarn lock is also going to get updated. If we scroll down to the express section, you can see 3.0.0 now shows up there. So if I were to deploy to Heroku and it was to reinstall my dependencies, this is the version that would get installed. Over in the terminal, I'm going to clear the output and run git diff to see the diff. 
And you can see right here, we have what we talked about. The dependency changed inside of package.json and the entire yarn lock file essentially got rewritten because all of the dependencies did indeed change. Some of them just got tweaked, but you can see that pretty much everything has changed because we changed that version. Yarn lock only gets updated when we add, remove, or upgrade a dependency. Now from here, let's say we have an outdated version of Express and we want to upgrade to something more recent. Well, there's a couple things we can do. First up, we can use yarn outdated. Yarn outdated is going to go through your package.json file and it's going to print a little report for each dependency. Here we have Express. The current version we're using is 3.0.0 and what we want is 3.0.0. That's exactly what's specified in package.json, but the latest is 4.14.0. So it's probably a good idea to update. To update one of your outdated dependencies, yarn upgrade can be called. If you want the latest version, you can leave off any sort of version tag. This is going to upgrade us to the latest, which is 4.14.0. Now we're back where we started earlier on. And if I go back through my previous commands and rerun yarn outdated, you're going to see this time around, we have no outdated modules. We're on the most recent version of the only dependency we have, which is express. Now let's go ahead and talk about what happens when you clone a project that uses Yarn. How do you regenerate node modules? To do that, we're going to delete node modules. Now previously from the terminal, we would have ran npm install to sift through package.json and get everything set up. Instead of npm install for Yarn, we use Yarn install. There's nothing else required. Yarn install is going to go through package.json and the Yarn lock file. It's going to figure out the versions required. It's then going to fetch them and it's going to link them into our project. Now right here, you can see the build was done in about 0.9 seconds, which is pretty fast. This is because Yarn has local caching. This is a thing that really speeds up Yarn and makes it significantly faster than the NPM command line interface. Now when I say caching, this is what I'm talking about. I've installed version 4.14.0 of Express before. I installed it maybe six minutes ago when we first installed our project's dependencies. When Yarn grabbed it, it didn't just add it to our project, it also added it to our local cache. So the next time we need to use Express 4.14.0, whether in this project or another one, it doesn't need to re-grab the download from the web. It can use the local version. This means Yarn also has an offline mode. If you're reinstalling a project's dependencies, you don't need an internet connection to get that done because all of those are cached locally. Now we can go ahead and clean the cache, removing all local cached items to see how this affects the build speed. To clean your cache, you just need to run yarn cache clean. This is going to clean our local cache. And before we go ahead and reinstall express to see how this affects the build time, let's just wipe node modules. Now back in the terminal, I'm going to use yarn install. This time around, it is going to need to fetch those packages and you see the total time to install our modules dependencies is 1.64 seconds, a little bit less than double the speed it took with a cache in place. So obviously with one dependency, the difference isn't that great, but imagine it took 30 seconds with Yarn. That means it would have taken almost a minute with NPM. Yarn's caching feature really is fantastic, speeding up the time it takes to get your dependency is installed and enabling an offline mode if you already have them in your local cache. There's just a couple of things left to talk about. Up next is scripts. You know, inside of NPM, we were able to use scripts in package.json, start scripts, test scripts, build scripts, and anything else we might need to do. And you can do the exact same thing with Yarn. To set this up, you're going to add a scripts property in package.json, just like you would for NPM. And in here, we specify our scripts. We might want a start script to start up our app. Maybe here we just use node to run server.js. And we can also have other scripts like a test script. And this test script would get some work done. Now to use these scripts, all we need to do is use yarn run. 
if you run yarn run without any arguments, it's actually going to list out all of the scripts that you can run. Here we have a start script and a test script. It's asking which one we'd like to run. Let's go ahead and run start. This is going to start up our server just like it would if we ran node server from the command line. Now we can also specify the script we want to run right away if we know what it is. Yarn run followed by that script. In this case, yarn run start has the exact same effect. It doesn't need to ask us which one we'd like to start up. Now if I was going to run something else like my test script, that would be yarn run test. This would start up and execute my test script. Currently though, it is indeed on to find. The next thing I'd like to talk about is global modules. This is something that is supported by the NPM command line tools and Yarn supports it as well. What we're going to do is install Nodemon. Nodemon is a command line tool. It allows you to run a script like server and then rerun it when the file changes. It's really useful for local development. If you already have Nodemon installed, you can figure out if you do or not by running node mon, then you're going to want to go ahead and uninstall it. Here I don't have it installed. If you do, you'd use something like npm uninstall g node mon. Make sure you do not have node mon and once it's uninstalled, we're going to go ahead and reinstall it using yarn global. Now yarn global lets us do a few different things. We can add, remove, and upgrade our global modules. I'm going to use yarn global add. Yarn global add takes the thing you want to add. We want to add node mon. We could specify a version like 1.0.0 if we wanted to, or we can go ahead and leave that version off to get the most recent version available. I'm going to run yarn global add. This is going to go through the process of resolving those packages, fetching them, linking them. And in the end of the day, I should be able to run node mon from the terminal. Here you can see that the application did indeed crash, but that's because we didn't specify the correct file. It's trying to start index.js, which does not exist. The thing I am interested in though, is that the command actually ran. It was installed. Here we're seeing output from node mon. We can go ahead and use node mon correctly by shutting it down. Node mon server.js. This is going to start up our server on localhost 3000. And if I make a change to server.js, I'm going to change my message. I'll say the server and save it. You can see over inside of the terminal, it does refresh. Everything is working as expected. Now, adding a global module is just one of the things you might want to do. You might also want to upgrade a global module. That gets done via yarn global upgrade. Yarn Global Upgrade lets you upgrade your module. For example, I can upgrade Node Mon to a specific version or to the most recent version. I'm going to upgrade to 1.0.0, which is actually a downgrade. But once this does complete and I rerun the previous command, Node Mon Server, you can see we're now using version 1.0.0. All right, the next thing we're going to do is learn how to remove those global modules. That's going to be yarn global remove. Here, we want to remove node mon. So we're going to run our command just like this, leaving off any version information. It's going to go ahead and remove it. And now if I try to reuse node mon, we should get an error saying there is no such file or directory to run. Your error might differ depending on the operating system, but either way, you should see a message like this. So whether you're using Yarn locally in your project or globally from the command line, you can do anything that you would be able to do with the NPM command line tools. You're not limited when using Yarn. You're getting the exact same stuff done. You're just getting it done in a much more efficient, secure way. Now to really see and understand the differences I'm talking about, we are going to want to use Yarn in a bigger project. So the last thing I want to do in this video is convert a project originally created with NPM command line tools over to Yarn. Now if you have a node project you're working on or you have something sitting around on your machine, you're welcome to convert that to Yarn. If you need a little bit of inspiration, I have a project that I'm going to be working with. This is available on GitHub. It's github.com forward slash Andrew J. Mead forward slash react course timer app. 
This is an application that students build in my React course. You do not need to know anything about React in order to follow along because remember, we don't have to change our JavaScript files when switching from NPM to Yarn. I'm gonna grab the URL, the SSH cloning URL. Then over inside of the terminal, we can shut down any previous commands that may be running. I'm gonna use cd dot dot to get back to the desktop and here I can clone that repository, git clone. I'm gonna dump that URL in there. This is gonna create a folder on the desktop called React Course Timer App and we can cd into it. React Course Timer App. I'm gonna clear the terminal output to give us a nice clean slate and I'm gonna pop open this directory inside of Atom. We're not gonna need the yarn example anymore. Instead, we're gonna open up React Course Timer App. Now this was originally created with NPM and there are quite a few dependencies. So this is gonna let us see the drastic difference in the time to get those installed. To kick things off, let's go ahead and install it with NPM. Now I wanna keep track of how long this takes. So I'm gonna use time before my command. This is only available in OS X and Linux. If you're on Windows, this is not gonna work as expected. So you can leave this part off. You are just gonna run NPM install. Everyone else can run time NPM install. And this is gonna go through the process we're used to. It's gonna be grabbing those dependencies. There is no caching involved, which means even if you've used it before, it has to refetch it. And then it's gonna be linking all of it into the project. We're gonna be able to compare this to Yarn in two different ways. We're gonna compare it to Yarn with a cold cache, meaning we have no locally cached modules, and we're gonna compare it to Yarn with a warm cache, meaning that we do have some or all of our modules cached locally on the machine. It's going through these standard steps. We should be done in just a few seconds here, and we should get a wall clock timestamp dumped to the screen. Here we go. That whole process took 50 seconds, 50.4 seconds. This is the real wall clock time as opposed to the CPU usage times showed down below. This is the time you spent sitting in your chair while that command ran. Now, before we go ahead and use yarn install, we do wanna clean that cache. That's gonna be yarn cache clean. We're gonna start with a cold cache and we're gonna compare those build times. I'm also going to wipe the node modules folder from inside of the project. And you'll notice I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing any files. All I need to do is run yarn install. Now, previously it took 50 and a half seconds. Let's see what happens when yarn installs. Now Yarn is doing quite a bit of work behind the scenes here too. It's dumping all of those modules into the cache so they're available for next time. And it's also comparing checksums, making sure you're not running any malicious code on your machine. It ensures you're running the code that you intend to run. Now it's going through the third step, linking those dependencies into our project. We're almost done and right here you can see the entire process took just 36.42 seconds. We were able to shave 15 seconds off the install time by just switching tools. There was no caching involved. It needed to fetch everything in the node modules folder. Now the third comparison I wanna run is to see what happens when we install all of these dependencies but we do have them in the cache. To show this, we can delete node modules for the last time. Then over inside of the terminal, we can reinstall it using yarn install. This time we should see an even further decreased time. Notice how quick step two just took. That was the phase where it's supposed to be fetching all of these packages. It didn't need to fetch any of them. All it was doing was checking if those versions were cached, they were, so it was able to quickly move on to step three. We should be done here in just a second or two, and you can see the time it took to install those modules is literally cut in half when everything is sitting inside of the cache. So using Yarn, you're either A, gonna get a faster build time if you don't have a cache, or B, you're gonna get a much faster build time if some of those are cached. There are only benefits to be found when switching to Yarn. Now it would be nice to confirm that switching over to Yarn did not break the application. I'm gonna do that by first installing Webpack with Yarn 
global ad. We're going to install Webpack and the version specified for this application was at 1.12.13. I'm going to go ahead and add this real quick. That's going to allow us to compile our UI JavaScript file and then we'll just check it out in the browser making sure it still works. Next up, we can run Webpack. We don't need to provide any arguments here. We're going to run it just a single time. Then we're going to start up the server using node server. And these steps obviously only apply if you chose to use the same repo as me. Everything went well so far. Let's go ahead and check out localhost 3000. Over in the browser, I'm going to pull it up. And right here, we have the countdown application. Currently, everything seems to be working as expected. I'm going to type in a number like 16 in countdown, and we go from 16 to 15 to 14. This is using Webpack. It's using React, React DOM, and a bunch of other tools, all now installed with Yarn. Now that we've confirmed everything is still working, we're looking at just advantages here. Over inside of Atom, we do have our Yarn lock file, and the last thing we would want to do in order to switch our project over to Yarn is to make sure to add this to the repository. We want to ensure that those same versions get used. Over in the terminal, I'm going to shut down the server and run git status. Here we have one new untracked file. I can use git add yarn.lock to add that. I'm going to rerun git status to make sure everything went as expected. Here we have our new file ready for commit. I can commit it with a message switch to yarn. There we go. That is the process to switch your app to yarn. Install your modules, commit your yarn lock file, and you are good to go. Now, there are a ton of other features you can use inside of Yarn, which is why I highly recommend you check out the website. That's yarnpkg.com. Check out the getting started guides. Check out the docs, the packages, and the blog. It's all sitting here, and it really is all fantastic. This has been a quick introduction to Yarn. Hopefully, you can start using it in your projects to speed up development time. If you want to get more videos like these, you can subscribe over at my website, mead.io. I will see you next time.